Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria, and today we are here unboxing and walking through and giving our first impressions on the Akashic Truth Oracle card deck. Um, this is by, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, Saint Paling, maybe. Uh, anyways, this was gifted to me. I think it's a relatively new on the market, but I'm not 100% sure. So I guess we're going to find out together. Uh, so this is in a hard shell box, so which is really quite nice. Um, let me take the uh, cellophane off of here and uh, so we get don't get some glare off of it and ugh, okay hard to get off there we go I got it and here we go so the back of the box says here the Akashic records are a record of your soul that holds all the information about your soul gifts chosen life experiences and the karma you are still repeating in this lifetime if you are feeling stuck or overwhelmed and are unsure of the cause, the Akashic Oracle of Truth can provide you with objective spiritual insight into the choices you are making in different areas of your life, the obstacles these choices are creating, and the next steps you can take to be more joyful and abundant. As you work with this suit of cards, you will develop your intuition and strengthen your connection to your Akashic Guide and your own Akashic Record. So, um, interesting. So let's crack it open and have a look. So two part hard shell box. Very nice. Always better than a tuck box. Um, one thing I do notice is that on the side, it's just flat on the side. So what happens when the decks or when the boxes are like that, there's nowhere to kind of grip it to pull it open. So you kind of got to dangle it by its, uh, by its lid. But anyways, but that's fine. Then we go into, there we go, there's no no holder on that. Usually they have something there in place, a lot of cards in there. Uh, that's the inside of the box. So again, just a hard shell box. Keep your cards nice and protected. This is a lot of cards. <laughs> Whoa, right? This is like tons. A lot of Oracle decks have, I mean, I really hate it when they only have 36 of them. It's like, come on, just throw a few more cards in there. Uh, a lot have 44 or up to about 68 uh, in some way. I have no idea how many are here, um, but there's a lot. There's, yeah, tons. All right, um, let's have a look at the card stock. So we've got kind of like a semi-gloss on there. Oh, there we go. You can catch the light there. A little bit of a semi-gloss. Uh, they got a little bit of play in them, so depending on how you shuffle your cards, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, they are slippy. Woo! There we go. So if you like to fan your cards, this is a good deck for you. They're not getting stuck or anything like that, but because they are a little bit slippy, they could be, uh, you know, depending on the size of your hands, a little bit challenging to work with. Um, if I compare the size to a regular, whoopsies, a regular standard tarot card, they're about the same length, and these are just a little bit wider. So uh, regardless of the size of your hands, you should be able to shuffle them and figure out a way uh, to work with them. Um, I, t I tend to shuffle my cards this way, um, and I don't bend them or anything like that, or you can shuffle them like overhand or underhand or whatever works for you guys. So this is the back of the card. Hmm, unfortunately, they all have the name of the card, na name of the card deck on the back. Uh, I don't necessarily love that. I find it a little bit annoying or distracting sometimes, but I have a feeling this card deck does not have any reversals in it, so it's probably relatively irrelevant. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of um, a little bit a little bit in your face. I guess you'll never forget which deck that you're working with. Um, then we've got an image uh, on the top part of the card there. This one is walk away and we see a person in here kind of resigned to her fate by the looks of it. We've got someone walking away. She might actually be the one walking away. So um, we may as well read this one on the bottom. Uh, you're wasting your precious energy on something that will not bear fruit. It's time to turn your attention to things more aligned with your soul's purpose. So uh, basic message on there. It'd be pretty good for beginners, I would think, um, just because there's not uh, there's no booklet or anything like that with this. So uh, use it as you see fit. 
Uh, you could do, if you're new to, uh, new to divination and cards, you could do a simple one card pull. If it's just for yourself, uh, you could do a three card reading, right? Past, present, future. Uh, you could do things like that. You could pull more than one card, obviously, for your past, present, and future as well. Um, you could probably, I, I don't, I don't typically do a Celtic cross or anything like that with oracle cards. It's, uh, but hey, to each their own. Uh, I'm sure you could. Uh, you could probably, um, Great for shadow work, uh, things like that. Um, working with the Akashic Records, you're not going to tap into your Akashic Records just by pulling one card, but it'll certainly um, perhaps give you some insight into some underlying issues or energies around a certain situation and a little bit of guidance, right? Like, for example, the walk away, right? You're holding on to something that just ain't working. Time to break the pattern, break the cycle, right? So it can be a little bit of insight there for you guys, right? So it's a really good a uh, really good little thing there for that. So let's quickly go through. We're not going to read every single card. There's tons of them in here. We'll be here for the next 45 minutes. So we won't do that. But what we will do is just um, look at each one and just kind of look at the header. Uh, you can get a pretty good idea of what the card uh, represents just from that. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. Zoom in just a little bit closer so that I don't have to hold it up as high and you can see. So we've got fresh start. Have faith. Open up. Reassess. It looks like the images on the cards are all in a fairly similar uh, palette. A little bit shadowy in there. Um, it can really help to spark your intuition because you're not so much relying on the image but just kind of like the outline of it you know so that can be um either a hindrance or a help depending on your take on that soar wings on that one right spread your wings listen big ears on the coyote jump in let it go which is not necessarily the same as walk away, by the way. Uh, speak up. Compassion. What we'll do is we'll stop on one of these uh, as we go along, just kind of randomly um, when something kind of jumps out. Patience. It looks like a little Mr. Sloth on there. Step back. Release. Pay attention. Resolution. Interesting. This one's got uh, looks like a wolf and a full moon. Whatever it is that you've been struggling with is about to be resolved. Remember that resolutions don't always happen in the way we hope or want, but being able to move forward and start fresh always brings relief. There we go. Healing. Grounding. Mr. Elephant on there. Miracles. Let's read miracles. You're being blessed to pay extra close, you're being asked, excuse me, to pay extra close attention to all the big and small miracles that have already occurred in your life and also to those that are currently occurring and are still to come. Miracles surround you. Be on the lookout for them. Detach. Abundance. Soul's whisper. Courageous heart. Release judgment. Boundless possibilities. Protect. Pause. Expand. Break free. Bravery. Choice. Reach out, strategy and planning, honor yourself, scattered energy, see it through, shame. You've carried this burden for far too long. 
It's time to release the guilt you've placed on yourself and start a new chapter in your life. Set a new goal and begin taking action towards happiness. Obligation. Authenticity. I love the peacock on that. The peacock quite often does show up um, uh, in messages about authenticity. So let your free flag fly, right? Be yourself with that one. Follow your passion. Reflection. Take charge. Enabling. Reward and recognition. Trust in yourself. Study. Solitude. Never underestimate the power of a little bit of solitude in your life. Be present. We forget that sometimes in our hustle and bustle of our world. Stand your ground. Wisdom. Warrior spirit. Depleted. Professional assistance. Discovery. New ideas, people, or opportunities may be coming your way. While there is still work to do to reach your goal, you may discover new strengths and passions along the way. Stuck in lack? I don't like that one. Consider the options. Forgiveness. Release attachment. Stuck in fear. It's a big one for a lot of people, and we we don't necessarily give the power of fear um, the attention sometimes that it's deserved, right? We think fear is about new things, but fear can be about anything. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of letting go, fear of um, the unknown, right? You know, all these kind of things. You're, you're thinking of all the things that could go wrong, but what about the things that could go right? Make a paradigm shift in your thinking and take inspired action anyway. Face your fears. Do it anyway. They say do one thing a day that scares you. That's a lot. That's daunting. That's a tall order. Maybe once a week, once a month, at least something, right? Something that's a little bit more attainable than once a day. It's kind of hard to find things we're scared of every single day. So bring balance. Gratitude. Caring connection, self-doubt, self-love, dependence, speak your truth, victim mindset, more common than you would believe, inner peace, we like inner peace. Connect to intuition. Sometimes we need that reminder to do that, right? Take a chance. Take the high road. Difficult road. Acceptance. Walk away. Deception. And our last one, we'll read it, find the lesson. Something has happened and it stopped you in your tracks. In reality, it was simply teaching you where you needed to grow. There is no such thing as a failure, so pick yourself up, learn from it, and keep going. So there you have it. So a lot of cards. Um, the, uh, the sayings on them or the messages on them. Um, you know, depending on what question you ask, they can actually bring you some deep insight. They are fairly basic, right? And I mean, of course, there's no book or anything like that. So, um, 
use them freeform. If you have this deck, I would love to hear from you. Um, how has it been working for you? Has it been spot on? Um, you know, has it been challenging to work with in any way? Do you find that it is insightful and, you know, or anything like that? Because, of course, it is supposed to be uh, the Akashic Records, right? The Truth Oracle deck. So, you know, in this deck, sometimes, you know, the cards can deliver um, deep truths that we don't always want to see or face, right? So it can be very helpful in that regard. Great for a one-day poll or a specific question um, or, you know, even for, um, you know, where am I stuck or what can I do to, you know, break a cycle and things like that. It might be very helpful in that regard. However, that is the Akashic Truth Oracle deck. Um, first impressions. It's okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I do have uh, a couple of decks in my um, in my collection that I do use to access the Akashic Records, and they go deep, 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 deep. Those ones, and um, uh, you know, there's it, it can take a little bit of time. So if you are called on a journey to um, connect with your Akashic Records, know that it is not a light switch. For some people, it can take a long time. Not everyone's journey looks the same. I do I do always remind people about that. My journey is not the same as yours. It's not the same as next person's or the next person. Some people connect very quickly, but they may be at a different spiritual level, right? Um, and it may just be their time to access it. They may also have a stronger connection like with their guides and things like that. Um, there are people around that do specialize like in things like past life regression or Akashic records to tap into those. Um, you know, so if you want to kind of accelerate some things, then you can probably like pay someone's services to do that. But this can certainly be a good start, right? Um, a ba fairly basic start, but a good start, I would say. So I'll probably find a way to use these because um, I do a lot of collective readings, obviously, on my channel. And uh, I do find sometimes uh, that uh, decks like this are very helpful when reading for like a whole group of people. Um, but they can be very insightful for you as well. So, you know, if you like what you see and you like the deck, I'll throw the link down below where I got them um, and um, or where the link to is where you can buy them. I didn't buy these ones myself, um, but uh, I do know where they came from. So, you know, so anyway, um, but I'll throw that down there so you don't have to go searching high and low. But let me know, do you have this? Does it work for you? Um, what are your first impressions of it? Do you have experience? with your Akashic Records. We can all learn from each other, no matter how experienced or um, green you might happen to be on your spiritual journey. So I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.